Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to 10 Minutes With. So we're doing an influence chain. Influence chain means that we start way back and we move forward through uh, one particular artist's influence and impact on another artist and kind of a domino effect. So we've gone from Milton Kniff, Jack Kirby. We did John Romina Sr. We did Steranko, Jim Steranko, Paul Gulacy. Uh, we did, um, <laughs> so many, it must have been a thousand artists, Walter Simonson. So I, I decided to do Larry Stroman next for a few reasons. I think he's kind of captures Jack Kirby. He's got like some of the, like, like, I don't know if Starenko's in his stuff, but there's some graphic qualities to it. And it also has a little bit of the Walter Simonson thing. He just, he felt like an interesting, uh, transition. I was tempted to do Wills Portacio. I've done a few videos on Wills. And I think we could fit him in a different influence chain. So sometimes I, I'll take um, liberties with that. Right, but let's get into this. We've only got 10 minutes. I'm really going to try to be disciplined on time here. And uh, so this is a great cover by Stroman and Al Milgram. Larry, Larry's stuff is actually pretty influential. Um, I mean, I see little bits and pieces of his work in different artists, and I don't know if it's a coincidence or if it's, um, you know, an actual connection. But uh, nevertheless, he is one of the more unique um, styles out there that you'll see. But yeah, we'll do one to two more on this influence chain, and then we're going to wrap this one up. This went way longer. I, I generally would like to have them be five steps, if possible. So we'll paint in very broad strokes. No one is one-dimensional where it would be one influence, although maybe some, some artists might have a little bit more of that. This is, I think, Alien Legion. Yeah, it's a pretty good guess. This is a little stretched out. Let me... Uh these old uh, heritage scans sometimes uh, the pixel aspect ratio is a little funky I, I mean I definitely it's weird because like I don't know if it's just a coincidence but I mean even like this this is kind of Wills Portacio ish but I don't, I don't know which, which direction it comes from someone was saying in my Travis video that they saw Larry Stroman and Travis's stuff I'd never heard anyone make that comparison before, but it was interesting to me. And that wasn't even, we weren't even really doing an influence chain at that point. But someone um, someone pointed that out and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. So it's all in the eye of the beholder. It also, you know, one thing with these influence chains is, depending on when you discover an artist, you're going to, uh, you know, not, ca you won't, you might not necessarily categorize this stuff chronologically. I, I've said this in past videos. I've done video. I, I mean, I've talked to people at comic book conventions that will will not have any idea who a particular artist is. And you're like, man, that's so crazy that you've never even heard of that person. It's like real famous people. But, you know, it just depends on what you're exposed to. What, you know, if you have a peer group, what they're into. And um, that's just the way it goes. So I first saw Larry Stroman's work on Tribe. This isn't tribe, but this large booty made me think of it. But um, somewhere within the next two years, I picked up a couple of comic book collections, and I had pretty big runs of other things, X Factor being one of them. And then I saw his work in there, and I was like, man, this guy's stuff is really cool. It's so different. I've always been a fan of this uh, graphic um, look, too, where uh, a lot of the detail drops out, but there's um, nice big black areas makes it real solid and just kind of cool looking and i mean he no one really draws faces like this guy but i mean again it kind of like i said it made me feel, think a little bit of jack kirby where jack kirby's aesthetic got unusual where at a glance you might go well, his people are kind of they all look like frankenstein or something whatever it looks like to you but this is pretty cool and it's hulk if you've seen the other videos, you know that I'm a big Hulk fan. This was pretty cool. Very controlled ink line. Man, it's pretty impressive. You can see he didn't have to use whiteout on these edges. 
So those are probably, a lot of them could be sculpted lines where you actually, it's hard to say. I mean, I guess some people do lay down, like, um, frisk it or something so that, like, it, it doesn't look like they did, though. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty nice, man. I don't know if these are brush lines or if it's a crow quill and they filled in the black in between. But, yeah, tapered lines like that, they can be a bit of a, a, bit of a pain in the butt. I'm, like, trying to reverse engineer it now. It's... Yeah, there's a technique that you can use where you actually hold the template in your hand and use a brush and do feathered lines like this. Oh my gosh, it's that's it's so hard. I think that's the hardest inking technique, believe it or not. If you can't picture it, imagine holding a triangle, like a, a, a beveled edged inking triangle in one hand and then balancing it well enough on the page that it's, it holds still. And then you do brush lines where you actually are supporting the brush you know, like it's it's just li riding against the side of the um, triangle, and you're doing um, speed lines. In, in particular, on a page where you're going around the whole page, that is crazy. More Hulk. Someone mentioned Alan Davis. I like that too. This this was kind of neat because this, although it doesn't look exactly like Walter Simonson, you know, Simonson had a little bit of. The, the spaceship thing kind of going on, so it was kind of nice. Yeah, I felt like Larry Stroman kind of fit into this influence chain. I've looked at so much art over the last couple of weeks, it's all become one big blur. Robocop? What's he doing in it? I like this dry brush effect right here. It's very cool. This looks like smooth bristle to me. Um, sometimes with um, uh, like less ink on your brush um, and rough board, you can get this dry brush effect. But it's it's a little trickier on um, smooth board. But this looks like really nice old paper. I can I don't see any tooth, man. This is like really the good stuff. Got a little zipatone on it. This was always interesting, too. So Marvel, sometimes when they would format pages to scan them, would trim them so that they would fit in these, I guess, holders or something. So they could scan them, and they would also put these, um, like, little um, targets for the scan on the page. Like this kind of stuff to, to line it up. Pretty interesting. DC and Wildstorm never had that, um, at least. Uh, we had templates that we could drop pages in, but um, not, uh, like, taped on or um, trimmed pages. Cloak and Dagger. Really nice. Hey, and he has a little bit of, I would maybe say, Sienkiewicz in his stuff. But it could be a coincidence. You know, maybe it comes from somewhere else. This was cool. This was... God, who inked this? Does it say? Alve. Yeah, I thought this was interesting. So this is Iron Man. I'm wondering, too, now this kind of, I don't remember, but I, is this, yeah, this is Image Comics Board. So this must have been right after Wills did Iron Man, because this looks like Wills' design. And that's funny, because we were talking about Wills in this influence chain, and it's interesting that they eyeballed Strowman to follow Wills on Iron Man, if what I'm thinking is correct. This is definitely Wills' thing. I, I worked on a little bit of the Iron Man stuff with Wills, Wills and JD. JD was inking it, but um, I helped out. And uh, I remember some of this. Alve did a real nice job. I don't know. I don't really know what happened to Alve. He was definitely in Wildstorm's rotation of inkers that they would use. He never visited the studio. He wasn't living in San Diego. Um, but you know, he inked Aaron Weisenfeld on and off for a while, and other people, and always would get pretty plum plum jobs, as they say. This was cool, too, and this kind of had, like, doesn't look like Steranko, but, you know, said I'm grasping for straws here. Just go with it. The influence chain. <laughs> yeah, pretty neat. I'd never seen this before. This was cool, too. Alien Legion cover. I'm reading his notes. <laughs> a little 
Kirby. Little Kirby vibe in it. K -k Kirby. While I was getting these files together, I actually was looking at some X Factor issues, and um, I was looking at some of the Jay Lee stuff that Jay Lee did on X Factor, and it kind of had a Strowman vibe. But I had to look twice at a couple of pages and go, "Is this Strowman or is this Jay Lee?" But um, it's possible that Jay Lee was influenced by Larry Strowman a little bit. I don't know what do you guys think. Jay's new book is coming out. Seventh Son, I think it's called. I just saw something this morning for it. I, I think he may have posted it on um, Instagram. This is cool. And this is kind of Wills like too. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's interesting. Forge. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, there's a high likelihood that we'll do Wills next. And then maybe I was thinking to finish off the influence chain either doing um, uh, Laniel Yu or. or um, uh, possibly someone that uh, would be influenced by Wills. If you have any other suggestions, let me know uh, if you could think of someone. And, th and then we'll end this influence chain with the those two. So Wills and then someone else. I don't remember this page in the book. This is still, this is a little bit before I started collecting comics, though. I only have these as back issues that I got after the fact, for sure. And solid figure. And these, there's like, I think, two more. This is great, and this definitely has a Sienkiewicz vibe. Man, it's so good. Yeah, it's really cool. And that's kind of maybe where the crossover between Jay Lee, Sinkevich, and Larry Stroman fall into place. I've always, and well, what's interesting is I know that we'll, I'm pretty sure Wills was a big Neil Adams fan. And so it's interesting because Sinkevich was a huge Neil Adams fan. And so you get this interesting sort of blend of. Um, that you know that can maybe be some of the similarities that we see between Strowman and Wills is somewhere in that mix. Oh, it's also complicated. <laughs> all right, so this should be the last one, and and I think we'll be much closer to ten minutes on this. So all right, you guys have a great day. Apologize that this is a little late. I had a very busy morning busy after early afternoon and uh needed to just get stuff done so all right i'll see you tomorrow with wills portachio usually i don't like to give spoilers on this but i think wills is definitely a good um next choice and then um give me a recommendation of someone that you guys think was influenced by wills and uh, we'll wrap up this influence chain for now and move on to either a reverse one or we can start a new one so any recommendations always appreciated hit the like and uh, make sure you're subscribed. All right, later.